Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to my Total War Warhammer Legendary Character Lore for Krell. And in this video, we're going to go through the lore of Krell, who's just been added to the game as a free DLC. Um, if you guys have seen my Missing Vampire Counts Legendary Lord video before, popping up in the top right-hand corner now, uh, do feel free to skip this video, because it's largely just a re-edited version of the information on Krell I included in that video. If you'd like to check out that that video by all means check the uh, top right the eye in the top right or the description below to see my full missing vampire counts lore video but other than that if you haven't seen that video before do please sit back and enjoy krell now a lot of people ever since the introduction of heinrich uh, have been begging for krell and they finally got him krell has got the reputation of being heinrich's bodyguard but before he was that, Krell has actually had a long history in the Warhammer world. When he was still alive, Krell was a Norsecan champion of chaos dedicated to the worship of the blood god Khorne. And he had managed to carve out for himself a significantly sized little empire. Now this was around the year negative 1500, so 1500 years before the arrival of Sigmar, let alone the current Warhammer timeline. So about 4000 years before the current Warhammer timeline. Now the exact location of this empire of Krell is sort of lost to time essentially. It's thought to have been either in the northern empire or the southern part of the chaos wastes or even a bit of both in fact. So once Krell had built this huge empire he started to look elsewhere for some sources of wealth and his eyes fell upon the kingdoms of the dwarves and he decided to start attacking the northern dwarf holds. He had a lot of success at this. In fact he managed to raise or sack the Dwarven strongholds of Karak Ungor and Karak Van before marching south and finally arriving at Karak Kadrin. Now, at Karak Kadrin, he met a, a solid and stubborn resistance of dwarven warriors, and he fell himself under the axe of a dwarven warrior called Grimbol Ironhelm. Now, Grimbol Ironhelm managed to slay Krell, and once Krell was dead, his people kind of scattered. They did recover his body and take him back to the chaos wastes where they could bury him but really essentially his his empire fell apart after his death and his people scattered to the winds about 1500 years after the death of krell nagash who was the first necromancer who was living who had lived in kemri but essentially nagash is the big lord of the undead and he had returned from being killed and he was looking for an old item of his known as his crown of sorcery. You may recognize that Total War Warhammer fans as the crown that Azag happens to wear upon his head that gives him the death law of magic to use. But at the time, Nagash was looking for his crown to try and solidify his own magical powers. He stumbled into the burial mounds of these ancient people of Krell's old empire and indeed had through his understanding of ancient languages that had long fought past from the tongues of men he managed to understand that Krell's mound was in fact a very special one of one of the greatest warriors his clan had ever seen if not the greatest ever and he said oh I need some good warriors like this to make up my grave guard or to make up a white and to help me engage in battle with the lands of the living. So he raised Krell, and Krell was almost as powerful just due to the magic of Nagash as he was when he was a living warrior. So, so impressed was Nagash, and a little bit taken aback with the power that Krell still had, even as a white, that he promptly made Krell a general of his legions. And Nagash, still looking to try and find his crown of sorcery, set his eye upon the lands of men and the empire and started a campaign against the empire who at that point had all been pulled together under one under the leadership of one Sigmar. So Sigmar and his dwarven allies ride out to meet Krell and Nagash and Krell is assigned with leading a contingent against the dwarves while Nagash thinks he can handle the humans himself. So the battle rages on and Krell is slashing down little stunties left right and center decapitating them. He'd had a lot of experience of killing dwarves from his time as a man anyway and was having a good success and although stubborn and foolhardy the dwarven defense it had started and was about to buckle and crumble under Krell's incessant assault with his grave guard and the undead around him. Now at this point Krell starts to notice that the zombies are starting to drop, his skeleton warriors are starting to drop and he realizes that Nagash must have been defeated by Sigmar on the other end of the battlefield. Now Krell and his Graveguard, who he was maintaining himself, still managed to stay on their feet. And they hacked and slashed their way through the dwarves in an effort to escape, not necessarily trying to break the dwarf line at this point. And they do. 
but so battered had been the dwarves and Sigmar himself and the armies of men that they couldn't afford to sort of pursue Krell and his gang of, not gang, more like a sort of legion of Graveguard that he disappeared with. And this was to be a horrible decision that would come to be the lament of the Empire for many decades to come, as Krell and his Graveguard spent a campaign just taking unprotected settlements, slaughtering humans in the Empire wherever they could find them, and it wasn't until a few years later, in fact, that Krell had been rampaging around the Empire, that Sigmar had finally managed to corner him at the Battle of the Glacial Lake. And after a fierce battle, Sigmar had the strength of numbers, had the strength of Galmaraz, and managed to defeat Krell's army. Krell himself, they seemingly couldn't kill, so all they could do at that point was imprison him within a tomb that they'd built there, with magic wards upon it, to stop him from being free. And there, Krell was trapped for essentially the remainder of the next two and a half thousand years. That sort of time jump brings us to essentially modern Warhammer time, where Heinrich Kemmler, having sort of been exploring the waste and been known to be a bit of a wanderer himself, had stumbled upon the prison of Krell. And in a sort of use of his own necromantic powers, and by striking a deal with the Chaos Gods themselves, he managed to resurrect or to raise Krell and to free Krell, and to have Krell apparently serve under him. Now the deal he had to strike with the Chaos Gods, with they will, they will revive Krell to his former glory and restore his powers as he had them with the blessing of the Chaos Gods, but you have to promise us that you will take him and use him to bring destruction and violence wherever he goes around the world as it stands today. Now Heinrich having a few plans of himself, quite needing a thick bodyguard to protect him and work with him, and managed to have Krell, which is essentially, who Krell is essentially the ultimate white, really. And so he took Krell and Krell became something of a bodyguard and they became a notorious pair who went around together. Some of their most notable battles include the battle with the Bretonian forces, where Heinrich and Krell teamed up with Skaven at the Battle of, of Maisontal Abbey, and when Krell and Kemmler decided to engage with the Wood Elves in what would become known as the Winter of Woe and take an undead campaign there. At the moment, in the, in the Warhammer lore, Kemmler and Krell are hiding out in the Grey Mountains, which is the mountains between sort of the Empire and Bretonia, and they're causing trouble to both sides. In Total War Warhammer, however, he's still starting in Drakenhof, which I think should be changed. They need to move him away and maybe move him towards the Bretonian side of things with Krell. But Krell's a very light character. He's very much sort of the bodyguard for a kind of uh, squishy uh, Heinrich. And I look forward to seeing him added to the game. In terms of his gear, he has the armor of the Barrow, which has a decaying effect upon enemy weaponry. So maybe a radius effect of minus melee attack, I think would be the best way to represent that against Krell. You could either have that as a constant or as a popping action, depending on how you wanted to balance it. And the other thing was the Black Axe of Krell, whose jagged shards are said to sort of break off when they strike an opponent and break his skin, and travel to the opponent's heart and kill him that way. Now, I'm not sure how you'd implement this in Total War Warhammer. Yeah, I don't know. You'd have to give Krell Killing Blow as well, like the uh, Whites have already in Total War Warhammer. Um, but I'm not sure how you'd implement the Blade Axe. Maybe just make it a higher damage dealer, more more weapon strength, something like that. And that about sums it up for Krell. At the moment, through a deal with Chaos, Heinrich Kemmo is able to summon up enough power to free Krell or to kind of revive and free him and bring him up to his full strength. And that's who we have now in Total War Warhammer. Great little addition to the game nowadays, guys. Um, in terms of how he works, I've not at this point currently had a chance to look at his stats. That's why I left some of my more speculative stuff on how he worked on the tabletop in uh, this video. Um, also, just to give you a bit of background about what his tabletop character played like as well. Um, but other than that, guys, I will do a separate video where I look at the stats of Krell, his uses, and just a little bit about him on the battlefield as we have him today. But other than that, hope you enjoyed this little bit of background on Krell. A uh, special thanks to you all for watching, and a thanks to my patrons, Reese, Colin, Thomas, Mateus, Samuel, Matthews, David, Sign of the Emperor, and Niblets. And, of course, I hope to catch all of you guys on the next one.